Are we back? Okay. It looks like we're back. So strange. I have no idea what's going on here. All right, trying again. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. My internet was kind of panicking on me there a little bit. I think Google doesn't like me much right now. Let's close down Google Earth. Let's see if I can restart it here. All right, that booted right in. Piedmont Triad International Airport. Here we come. There he is. All right, the whole ramp showing up now. Very nice. <clears throat> Out of curiosity, I wonder. Let's do this. Desktop, F set. Okay, so that's working again. So let me see this. I'll try this one more time. Charlotte's there. And we are up here. There's the airport. All right, zooming in. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to try this at a different level here. Draw just enough to get this ramp. All right, we'll do zoom level minus three. Earth, all this stuff here. I do not want to use cash. Test package, skip that. <sighs> Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of backing out. We're doing this all a little bit over again. I want to try to see if now my internet's working a little bit better, if I can get a slightly better images here. In fact, let's change to Google 2. Alright, Google 2, different server, and cash. This is going to go so fast. See if the compiler will work while the app is already open. Sorry, these are important steps because we want to really get the best up-to-date info, info, information. Uh, 
it's not opening. All right, well, let's close all this up. Yeah, I know this is riveting, right? It says it's done, but I don't trust it, so we're going to do this again. Not clearing out the cache. Processing tile, 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 done. All right. FS package tool. Going here. I am a package tool, you could say. Yeah, so you never put anything in the... There it goes. Now it is working. That's what we want. Let's delete this old one. Out of the community folder, which I have here on the left. This is my... Finished package folder over here. Now ah, we're done. Okay. So here we go. We got the C H C G A C G L file. And that's gonna show us there it is. It's 218 kilobytes, so about 250 megabytes. This add-on that I've just made, this uh, little scenery, is just 213 megabytes. That is a doable size, so we'll just drag that into the community fold. I don't know why the why is the wheel spinning? There we go, and open up Flight Sim. This should go really quick. So it's much smaller scenery now. I feel like it didn't download the right level though. If it's that small, we'll see. Flight Sim always wanting to play the music by default, even when you turn it off. Did you know World Update USA 2 was up? I don't have any of that stuff uploaded right now, or downloaded. Not really into the World Updates all that much. The Sim, sim, sim Updates is what I am really into, which they, they are f much fewer of them and far between. All right, into the Sim. Let's select our airport. There we go. So now we can see there's a much a significantly smaller chunk of uh, scenery here. It's not going to show us the full detail of it. I'm hoping the rest of the airport is back to its original configuration. Uh, we'll park. Let's let's park over here actually. We'll jump in. First installment of the Microsoft Flight Simulator was released in 1982 the year I was born. Dating myself. That's right, I'll be the big 4-0 this year. Ugh. Ugh. What does it mean? Yeah, it still did this weird thing. Oh well. But it's not hurting anybody. I have a way of getting rid of all that. All right, so over towards the FedEx ramp we go. Now uh, it didn't get our higher res stuff. But it is high enough res. Let's open our project.
did the thing where it just lightens everything up, and it's, it's ticking me off that it does this. All right, let's zoom out a little. Sometimes I guess gotta zoom out. Load it again. better there we go okay into the editor all right let's set some things up first thing polygons i have a tendency to delete these by accident so i'm going to turn this whole folder off in fact i don't, I don't want to see them okay and we'll do the same for the objects don't care about objects open up the there oh how do we get taxi with signs how did that happen X ramp folder, let's turn that off. Good, okay. So, anyway, we can see these numbers 109, 108, 107. 106. This is actually a little higher res than the last time we did it, so this may, may be as good as it's going to get. I'm actually happy with this. You can see kind of the word stop in there. You can, yeah, okay, this will work. So, mission accomplished, I say. Turn the paths off, don't care about those. Actually, we are going to care about the paths. We need the paths. So, notice uh, the path color here is a light green here, and then it goes to dark blue here. That's because the paths inside of ramps, I just have a type of path. It's not a taxiway, it's not a runway, it's not parking or anything like that. It's just path. What is the difference, you might ask? Well, even if you might not ask, <laughs> you're asking now. Uh, this is, we're, we're, we're plowing ahead anyway. Let's see, window capture... Yeah, so I'm showing you the SDK. Make that a little wider. Okay, so let's see. We want to go index taxiway paths. And it talks about the different types here. Here's the type. So the difference is taxiway. This is general taxiway path showing us a, a surface and optional markings. These will be drawn in green and blue and seen. So you can do with all the markings and stuff. You can get, you can put edge lights, you can put markings, you can put materials, you can put center lines, center line lights, stuff like that in uh, using the taxiway type. If you use the parking type, this is path is used to connect the taxiway network to a taxiway or parking objects, which is what we're about to lay down. So we're going to need that. But the, so the only do this, you only do this, um, this like the path type does not show any surface material. So we'll show whatever is under it. For example, apron objects and stuff. These will be drawn in dark green in the scene, but only when connected to taxiway parking objects. <clears throat> That's good. That's where we're going to use path. This is a basic path that has no surface material of its own showing, so we'll show whatever is under it. Aprons and objects. Note that assigned markings will still be shown even when, even though the surface is not. These will be drawn in blue in the scene. <clears throat> so that's good. Path is basically what we're going to use on the ramps. You got close this flag. This flags the path as being closed and we're going to show extra markings on the surface. These will be drawn in red in the scene. Vehicles. This path type is specifically for airport support vehicles and aircraft won't use them. Vehicles will use them if they are available and linked correctly. But note that vehicles, it says he vehicles, but it, it means vehicles, will also use other path types if a vehicle path is not available. So I'll show you some of our terminal ramp. There's vehicles that move around, and they move around on the taxi paths because I haven't done a vehicle path yet. But I've also heard that vehicle paths aren't really working correctly. If you have assigned any markings to this path type, they will be different to the rest of the types, showing that the path is purely for vehicles. So it uses the vehicle stuff and not the, the taxi stuff. These will be drawn in dark blue in the scene. Roads. They can do stuff specifically for roads and, and road traffic. So we have, a, we have a darker blue one here. This is a type 
of this is just regular path. This will be drawn in blue. It says, okay, it's a regular old path drawn here. It goes through the ramp and then down. Why is it over here exactly? I don't know what that's doing there. Get rid of that. Okay, so that one's gone. There's nothing to go to out there. There was a there was a while where I was toying with the idea of using the center lines from all of these to go along with um, this stuff. I don't know. I'm at a loss here. I was using the center line the center lines for the paths, kind of instead of having to paint my own. But I uh, have since abandoned that idea. So I want to put another node in, like right about here ish connect it to this one. So if I just select both of them using the control button, see this one's white now and this one's white. And right click and just do a create a path and it'll draw a path in between those two marks. And now that's exactly what we wanted. Just trying to line it up with this line here. Good. Okay. Alright, so let's do a parking spot, shall we? Sorry it's taking so long. We're doing spot 109. All the way to the left. You see all these white markings? <clears throat> these are from older versions of the parking area. It, those, those have been covered up, basically. The, the, part, the paint has been painted over. So this is this one line right here that we're trying to meet. And uh, so go up to the objects, scenery objects, and we're looking for object type of taxiway parking. What kind of parking? Well, this is going to be ramp cargo. Add. Uh, I've already messed up. Let's delete that. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is make sure you're in the folder that you want the object to go into. So FedEx ramp folder is where we'll do this. Now we will add, there we go. Now we're down here at the bottom. That's what we want. Okay, so we can, we have this little circle here. Ramp cargo, say ramp GA, ramp cargo, blah, 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 blah. Military cargo, military combat stuff. Gates, small, medium, heavy, dock, VA. Doc GAs, uh, that would be for like uh, uh, float planes type of things, waterways, fuel, this is a fuel spot, no, this is for vehicle parking, no, it's ramp G extra, gate extra, no, this is ramp cargo, this is cargo ramp, so that's the type you want to set, uh, okay, so we have the, the radius and the heading of the thing, so we're just going to go and place it right here in the middle. We hit the E button to so get our little widget so we can rotate this. And then I'm going to set these arrows up so that they're kind of parallel to the yellow line that we see on the screen. And then that sh that manipulates the heading. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. And I see I'm off center just ever so slightly. So I'm going to put it right on center. Now that arrow should be pointing straight up, straight down that yellow line. Good. Radius is up here in the properties is your wing radius. So what type of airplanes are you going to be putting in this? That's a good question. So let's go ahead and bring the web browser back up. And so we're going to look at the the wingspan of the, we particularly want the wingspan, the wing radius of these aircraft that we're going to try to park here. Now, an, I think an Airbus 306 is the, it's the largest airplane maybe. So we're going to look up the 306's air uh, wingspan. Performance database, don't care. There we go. There you go. This website has a lot of good information about these things. Let's do a search for wingspan. There it goes. So the wingspan for the A306, according to Flugzug, not American. Airbus A300 is a twin type. It says the wingspan is 44.84 meters, or 147 feet, one inch. 44.84. So that's the wingspan. That's the entire wingspan. We're looking for radius. So this is kind of a diameter number that this website's getting us. So we're going to cut that number in half. We're going to round up, though. So we're going to say 45 meters. So I'm going to do, so the half of that is 22 and a half. So when we go into our properties here, off the browser so we want 22 and a half is the meters that I'm going to put in here 22.5 and notice our circle got bigger 
which is exactly what we wanted it to do. So yay for that. Um, so we have a bigger circle now. Ramp cargo is set. Uh, parking. So we're going to call this... Uh, what should we call it? Parking. Should we call it gate? Dock? No, gate. You want to call it dock? Okay. Not a gate so much as it is a parking. We'll just call it parking. Call it 109. Suffix you would put for stuff like gate, like gate A, gate B, gate C, where on the terminal ramp we did have some A's and B's, so this would be gate 39A, gate 39B. We don't need that here. Uh, okay, so it has number. That's a good one to do. We can't do anything with this yet because it's not connected. So first thing we need to do is let's move our elements here on the taxiway structure to move these in spots where they actually are. This one was right there, which used to be a parking spot on some of the older scenery, so that's why it was there. All right, so we need to get a node that's kind of perpendicular to it. If you want this line to be straight, We'll look at you with Paw Patrol stuff. So we're going to select the scenery parking spot. We're going to select the node we want to connect it to. Got them both at the same time using that left control button. And we're going to go ahead and right click and then hit create path. And now it has thrown a little green path in there. Hard to see, but it's there. So it's now connected to our taxiway network. That changes some things. So as soon as we do that, yeah. It's kind of an active parking spot now, so we can do the has number marking, and uh, we won't see it right away until you go edit the number position. And now this this uh, little pull thing here is actually just going to pull the number. You can see the kind of the little yellow number mark. We're going to put it right on top of this. Look at that; it says 109 on it, and so it's in the right spot. Now we're going to E for rotate widget, rotate gizmo, and there it goes, rotating. And then we move it around and it goes back to change its location. And we're just going to put it right there. And it says 109. Let's rotate just ever so slightly more. There we go. All right. So that's spot 109. And we will have the marking on the taxiway. So if we turn the apron back on, it should have put some markings in there. It doesn't look like it did. So, but it uh, created the parking spot, right? So the uh, nice thing about the car the ramp cargo parking is that it doesn't require a jetway. It will automatically populate items on there for us. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, rename this object. I'm going to spot 109. There we go. All right, so spot 109 is right there in the hierarchy, and it shows us all of these things. Oh, we have to turn off edit number position so that it uh, gets the widget off of that. There we go, and there's our number, 109. We'll do the, uh, the markings for it later. Very nice. So now we're going to add another one. So we'll hide the, the apron again, make this a little easier on ourselves. So this will be 108. There we go. Ramp cargo selected. Remember that we used the 22.5 radius. Make it a little bigger there, just like so. Drag it in the center. Get our gizmo up by hitting E and rotate it to our heart's content. That looks beautiful. Now the bummer about this is it's really hard to tell how this is going to work with your, like in terms of where the air, airplanes actually end up parking, like how close to these little T's and stuff. Um, so there's that. Uh, so you can do, does it have a number marking? So I'm going to select this little node down here, select the thing there, right click, create a path. Luckily it puts the path in the path folder. <laughs> oh, hooray. I'll go down here and sort of move that so it's right in the center. All right. 
Good, good, good. So we'll hit as numbering. I'm going to edit the number. Drag down here. You can s barely see that number. Oh, I haven't actually numbered it yet. So we're going to parking. This will be 108. There we go. So that changes to a 108. Right. Put that white dot right in the center there. E for the bring it up to gizmo. Let's rotate. Chill around that rotation part goes away. There we go. Isaac, man, good to see you, buddy. It's been a while. I haven't been around much. That's my fault. All right. Very good. I feel like something other than parking. Northwest parking, no. Gates. No, we'll just go with that. All right, so I'm going to rename this one. This will be spot 108. There we go. Let's uh, start. Lining them up. Oops, let's select spot 108 again and turn off the edit thing. There we go. Now this now they select normally. Alright, two of the FedEx spots are done. Now I could just go and start copy pasting these, but we're gonna we're gonna keep on adding the them one by one here. So I'm going to select number 108, or just the FedEx ramp folder in general. Add another one. Change the radius to 22 and a half meters. Zoom in a bit. Let's get it centered up. Alright, and now E, bring up the rotation widget, rotate it right to the center, that's like that. Good, good. Now the ground here is not at all flat. That's something that we'll have to do. We'll add a flat in here in a second. So I've got the spot selected. Right click there and create a path. All right, so we have another taxiway path. This parking spot is connected. And we'll call it parking 107. Does it have a number marking? You're darn right, it has a number marking. And we'll pull it down. Zoom in. Rotate. Good. Turn off the edit thing so we can select again. Good. And we'll rename this spot 107. Now you see when I do the debug of this later that each of these spots actually, they, the little green circle you're seeing for them right now sort of shows you what the radius is in relationship to what your pictures are showing. But what you don't see is that there's actually another six meters of ring around the outside that's there for like vehicles and stuff, I guess. So if that touches the six the six meter ring of the other one next to it, a pla an AI plane won't spawn in both of them. It'll only spawn in one of, one of them if they overlap. So it's nice that on a ramp like this, they're so spaced out because there won't be any overlap. AI would spawn in here just fine, in other words. Is that how important is that? I don't I don't know. To me some people are like to use AI traffic and especially if you use the live like the live traffic stuff, the feature that is uh, built into Flight Sim, it's kind of important for that. So that'll be part of the the, the uh, sort of the, the beta alpha testing of this uh, scenery product when we get it done that we'll have to see if anybody is actually using that stuff but uh, I think for I'm kind of that sim centric when it comes to my flying so I, I don't I don't care too much about that stuff myself 
So I wonder how many other people actually care about it. If you care about AI traffic in your sim, I don't mean like parking, like for like your model matching for fat sim stuff, but I mean I'm talking about do you care about how accurately planes like are are they the right kind of do you use AI traffic? I guess is what I'm saying in your sim. That's that's the question. If you do and you care about these things, let me know. Let me know. Sort of a informal poll, we'll call it. All right, has numbering? Yes. So notice I haven't connected this to, to the part to the uh, taxiway structure. So when I do do the editing position of the uh, the numbering, it doesn't show up. So the number actually won't show up until. And you can tell, see, it says parking not linked to main graph. So it, until you actually connect it to the parking structure, to the taxiway structure, it won't show you the, the marking. Now it, sh now it showed up. So editing the position again. All right, here's 106, done. So we have four spots. Spot 106. Four parking spots. And we've got three more to go. All right, here's 105, 104, 105. Good, and these are called what? 206, 207. Okay, so these are 200 size. I get side over here. I guess it's not showing me these spots still. 205. Still doing a 205 thing because we still park ATRs here. There's one ATR that comes in every night that I think part of, probably parks right over here. That's probably why this is A and B. So 205, A, B. I'll bet. Oh, look at that. I love it when it does this. Okay. I'm betting that because this spot is used, these big planes that nobody parks an ATR here, they probably just park it right, right there every time. In fact, you also often get like seven, 757s parked over there. Maybe the ATR parks over here. Who knows? It's unknowable. Unable to be known. All right, so the the contour of the ground, which likes to put a huge hole in this area over here for some reason, is getting kind of wonky. So let's uh, let's address that before we continue on here. So what I'm going to do is get kind of radical. So we're going to go. Make sure we're still on the FedEx ramp. We are. I'm going to go and put a rect not a rectangle. Let's just do a iron let's do a polygon thank you Aaron hello all right we're just gonna save right here thank you for snatching my water there we're gonna save Draw all this in there, terraforming. Thank you. And it's so that's a flatten. That's what I just did. I flattened it. Thank you. So now it's totally flat. We've revolutionized the design of this airport. All right, so this will be easier. Notice all the other things still line up well. Okay, so now we flat photos to work with. Yay! Second week of band camp this week. First song is on the field. Congrats. That's fun. So is that Come Sail Away? Is that the is that the first song? That's a cool song. That's one of my favorites. Alright, so there's the FedEx flatten. 
it's in. There it goes. Now, when you zoom out a certain a certain amount, it's going to kind of you see how it's sort of rejiggering the the, the land. It does. It's going to do that because the actual scenery file underneath is it, it doesn't have that that in it, so it changes it every time. That's because we're working in the scenery editor here. This is not permanent changes being made. It's all sort of temporary at this point. Ooh, this this got interesting. Working on bringing these points back down to earth here. They're getting a little floaty on us. All right, so here we are. Go back to the taxi parking. Taxi parking object, and we'll go all the way down to the bottom. Select the FedEx ramp, and we're going to add another one. So ramp cargo again. Go in and set 22 and a half meters. like it. All right, parking. This is one. What are we on? 105. There we go. And now we'll right click on the node here, create a path. Just ever so slightly move that so that it's in the right spot. Click back over here. It has number marking. Edit position. Stop. Drag it on down. Oh. Hi. Stop. Where did you find this? Uh, can you put it back in the box when you're done with it, please? I don't want to lose that. It's got my Airbus handles for my, thr my throttle quadrant. Now, we know that I don't fly Airbus, but that doesn't mean I'll never fly Airbus again. Maybe it does. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. All right, so there's that one. I'm going to rename it over yet. here. Spot 105. Okay, you don't have to put it away yet. I know you're not done. I'm kind of getting deja vu here because I've done this all in X-Plane before. <laughs> I painted all these little lines. One, two, three, four, five. You snatched it. You didn't snitch it. Snitches when you like kill on somebody. You, you drank all my water. Ugh. What am I supposed to do with you, son? What good are you to me? You just drink my drink my water, eat my food. Two, three, five. Yeah, you snatched my water. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you're you're quite broken up about this. Alright, rotating that, that's good. I'm gonna just go ahead and connect it now, create the path. Go, okay. This is parking. Oh no, Fower. That's how we say it in a ATC land. Fower. One oh Fower. So fun to say that way, isn't it? It's silly how like that's how the book says you're supposed to say four. Fower. Fower. So we like to mess around sometimes and say say it the way the book says it. Fower. Tree. Life. Niner. I say Niner quite a bit because Niner's fun to say. But uh, yeah, Fife and Tree sounds ridiculous. We don't do that. Fower. 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109. 
Good, 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 good. All right, that one's done. Spot. Bower. All right, last one for now. Add another hump. Twenty-two and a half meters. Zoom in so we make sure we get the center. Good. Rotate it. Beauty. Parking. Uh, three. Select the node. Right click. Create path. Now let's select that node again. And let's actually put it back down on the ground because it was up in the air. From the earlier wonkiness of the taxiway or the the bumpy bumpy land here all right so that's in now we go to has number parking and we want to edit the number drag it on down so isaac how's that uh how's that number how's that number sounding How's Come Sail Away going? Turn off the edit. And let's ramp up. Rename spot 103. All right. Now we've got a couple breaks here. Got to put a node in there. So I'm going to select this path, right click it and split the path. Puts a node in right there and we're going to move it to its right, right full spot. Prepping, doing the prep work for the, the remaining spots here. Same thing over here, splitting it. Moving that over to here. I'm not going to do that over here, but I will do that right here in this spot. So split this path. It's perpendicular to that spot. Let's allow it to enter that way. Sounding pretty good. Just need more wins. Yeah, that's for your little for your little band. I think that's going to be a, a a problem for a while. I'm afraid to say. All right, to the FedEx ramp again, adding another cargo ramp. Now, I don't know exactly what to reference this to in terms of distance from the stand. 22 and a half still. There's one more thing I want to check with those radiuses to make sure we've got a good one is I want to check the, we also get 767s and 757s. Now I'm pretty sure the 757s wingspan is not going to exceed that of the A3306. But it's something I don't want to be wrong about in the long run because I want to make sure that people who are using AI traffic, it will actually spawn the correct airplanes in because I've taken the time to set the radius correctly. Okay, that's in that spot. Oops. Select both of them. Create a path. It's connected. All right, so this is parking, what is this called? 207. It has a number. I would like to edit the position of that number. And drag it over there. And I'm not able to select it because I forgot to turn that edit number position off. All right, renaming spot 207. I'm going to move this all the way down to the bottom here. We got spot 103, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 207. Now that's spot 109 selected. We'll go and add another. Oh. 
22 and a half meters. Rotation gizmo. Let's make sure my arrows are pointing in the right direction, that the planes will be oriented correctly. Parking 206. Right, selected, let's select that node. Create path. So I'm going to connect it to the network. Has a number. I'd like to edit that number. Good. Oh, once again, I forgot to turn off the editing thing. All right, so name spot 206. Let's take it up one spot there. Still working hard for those indoor auditions. Been practicing quite a bit. I also started a practice log thing where I keep track of all the exercises I play in the tempos. I play them at. That's that is good. That is a good step right there, my friend. All right, so that's the last of the jet spots that I'm going to do right now. And now I'm going to look for Boeing 763F. Uh, we don't care about the wingspan. Where's my Flugaflug? Flugaflug website or whatever the heck that said. There you go. Fluga, flugazug, flugazug info dot net. Uh, wingspan 47.57 meters. That is more. <laughs> All right, so the 767-300 has a wider wingspan. I feel as though I should have known that. All right, so let's go to Flight Aware. Let's make sure that's the biggest plane. We had DC-10s for a while. KGSO, Airport, Piedmont Triad. Look at the... Arrivals. Oh, it wouldn't be today. This may be a little more difficult. All right. I have to have an account. Ugh. Okay, I think I do have an account. No such account. No such account. All right, let's uh, not worry about that too much then. I really don't have an account. How do I not have an account? Sorry, doing a little behind the scenes verification here of the FlightAware account. Verify, please click the link there. Verified. All right, account activated. Now I can see this hysterical data here. Scheduled departures. I don't want scheduled departures. I want history of arrivals here. Sunday, 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 Saturday, 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 Saturday. Saturday. 
problem is, is on Saturday and Sundays, they don't come in. We're in Friday now. The FedEx, 1580. It's a 3.06. Is that the only one that comes in on Saturdays? It's really Thursday nights are the last one of the week. The sort nights, 7, think, 7.63. Ten fifty eight heavy is a seven six three. Yeah, since the seven six threes are the biggest we get. Okay. Let's look at the DC the DC ten just for kicks. Oh, fifty point four one. Okay, so maybe we should do. 25 and a half. Yeah, let's change them all to 25.5. Let's see if I can do a global edit here. Select all of these at the same time. Nope, didn't work. Now, I cannot, for some odd reason, select this one. Oh, because of the number of things screwed up. So for some reason, someone decides to fly a DC-10 in here. It should work. I am a little bit worried about how close these are getting together. I don't think this will work properly. No, not in scenery editor. We will have to take a look at that later. Finally. All right, let's look ATR wingspan. 72. Where's my Fluga Flagon website? ATR 72 wingspan. Go practice, yeah, man. Go take advantage while you still got a uh, little time left in your summer. Do a do a recording or something like a field recording or something when you have a chance to. Uh, some of your some of your uh, not performance, but uh, how your music's going and stuff. Twenty seven point oh five meters. It's half of that, so we'll say 14 meters is what we need for this one. It's 15, it's fine. Okay, make sure we can hold the ATR. Taxi a point. Two oh five. A does that make sense? No. All 
right. Turn off the edit. All right, all of all ten of these parking spots defined. And linked. So let's see what the, let's see what the effect of this is, shall we? So we'll go ahead and save it as we should. Select it here, go inspector, we're gonna build the package. No fails, good. There shouldn't be fails at this point. This is all in all default resources. There shouldn't be anything failing. Do a quick restart. Of the sim, so we can put the updated uh scenery package in. Now to do this, I don't actually put it directly into the community folder anymore. I uh, there's a custom scenery files. Just rebuild packages. There's the latest package. So for this, I go to D M F S S add-ons scenery. Drag it into there. Replace all the files. Should be up to date. All these folders open. All right, now we reboot. Loading, loading, loading. Of Greensboro at uh, 2000. Yeah, a little sound. You said you wanted the left side? Yeah, it's possible. Uh, because we're parking at 639 Sierra Delta. 9 Sierra Delta, Roger. Drone right, base for runway 23 left short. Base 23 left short, 9 Sierra Delta. 9 or 6 9 or Sierra Delta. Cherokee. One of our training aircraft. It's a regular at the airport. Quick load here. There we go. Airplanes have spawned. These are just static. They're not going to move, but uh, get a kind of a, a glimpse of what loads in with them when there are airplanes there. Populates it a bit. Let's 
So you got stairs for cargo ramps, which is accurate. So you got luggage for some reason. And catering. Airplane. <laughs> Look at that little thing. And the terminal ramp. So the terminal ramp has uh I wanted to show you this because I wanted you to see the vehicles moving around. So because I don't have the, the buildings turned on right now, all the jetways don't attach to anything. <laughs> they sort of sit there. When the buildings come in, you'll see the jetways kind of all connected to the buildings. But they all work well. This is a this element right here is is good fun. Um, it ex it has to it ex extends when the sim loads, so it starts scrunched up and then extends out to the to meet the node here. But uh, otherwise, it looks like that. When it's, that's the only one at this airport that's like that. These are all static airplanes. They are not going to do anything. The vehicles, on the other hand, are moving. You notice there's no vehicle like like ta like taxi paths defined. So they just move along the taxiway paths, as I mentioned before. They they go in and park. <laughs> they stop at the actual gates and then turn around and come back. So that. You gotta do some experimentation with. Uh, see, here's a vehicle that's going for a little bit of a ride via taxiways. Hello, F Games from Saudi Arabia. Good to see you. Thanks for stopping by. I'm not from Saudi Arabia. I'm from the United States. That's all right. Nobody's perfect, right? Oh, there it goes. Doing the thing where it just flies around in weird directions on its own. I can't stop it. There we go. Up, 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 up. So flattening of ramp was definitely necessary for FedEx. Now notice it doesn't. It did that thing before where when I zoomed out a certain amount, it, that that big old dip came back. Well, it doesn't do that anymore because now it's actually in the scenery file when it loads. So, base scenery is loaded without that dip. Oh gosh, it's doing this thing again. There it goes. But look, look at the slope here. Oh, horrendous. I didn't, I didn't get the whole ramp. That's why. Oh well. Well, thank you for stopping in from Saudi Arabia. I appreciate it. All right, so now we've got all of these little taxiway numbers, but no markings otherwise. This is the part that gets a little, little long. Four three four nine or X ray Par Piper Warrior parks at Curry Aviation. So the sim has a problem where vehicles will just run around your entire airport on runways, crossing runways indiscriminately, not talking to air traffic at all, and uh, seeing this fire truck doing kind of that right now. Not to say that air vehicles at our, our airport don't go down taxiways. They do. I mean, they do inspections. We have fire trucks that do inspections sometimes. That's kind of what's happening here. So is there a way to f fix this? Not really. I guess there is. So let's experiment with that a little bit, shall we? So the question is, is when I load this, what's going to happen to vehicles? I 
think everything might stay where it is because I don't have AI traffic in. Oh, they all disappeared. I changed the texture, by the way, of uh, the main ramp. It's very similar still. But it has some discoloration to it, so not every panel is exactly the same, which I think better kind of represents what is really actually happening on this ramp. A little more checkered, but still keeps the overall nature. And then I changed this one as well, but it still keeps the overall color of the... You can still colorize them, and then you get to define the color, and there's some, just some variation on the theme there. That's my little practice patch down here. Got it all lined up about the same as I had the other one. Now, the texture itself is of different size, so I had to resize it and kind of play with it for a while as I did before. So here we go, a bunch of different taxiways. Now you'll notice that these circles are yellow. These are green. And the reason that is is because the yellow ones are actual gate ramps, which uh, have this little green dashed line to it that goes to the jetways because they will actually have to be connected to a jetway by default. They have to have a jetway. So if you have spots that aren't serviced by jetways, then you have to make them a different kind of ramp, which in this case is a ramp GA, medium element. Bunch of GA mediums here. So they don't have jetways. Now, the, the funkiness of this airport is, is that actually what really happens here is that this this jetway here actually serves this spot and this spot. You can see underneath it's kind of pivoted this way. It'll There's people getting on here. It'll do there. And then it'll, that plane's not there. And there's people over here. Then it'll swing that way. The same is true for this jetway. It does both this spot and this spot. And this one does this spot and this spot. Not a way in the sim to do that. Every jetway has one defined parking spot. So if you're in that parking spot, then the jetway that's defined for that parking spot will work for it. But you can't define a, the same jetway for more than one spot. So that's unfortunate. So these just will not have spots, and they'll have to use uh, stairs. Orca, hello, man. I haven't seen you in a while. Great to see you, though. Welcome to the show. So we've got all of these accurately placed spots that I was telling you about the... Oh, this is what I wanted to do. Go to the airport. We go draw debug. Oh, I'm in the editor again. Okay, so let's close that down. Give it a second to get out of scenery editor mode. There we go. Now we can see him. Let's go over to the FedEx ramp and take a look. Ugh. Wow. These are dangerously close to overlapping. So in the, de the debug mode in the regular sim, you see that, that radius-defined sort of circle polygon thing and also this okay. outer little checked one that is the six that extra six uh, meters that I was talking about and you'll see if they overlap so these narrowly miss these narrowly miss oh that one's even closer but that's another narrow miss these miss also this one should have no problem because there's a road in between them and those also miss Woo. So why did I not put an, a, a B parking lot spot in here? Because it would never get populated with airplanes because it would be too close to whatever came up with that. These also narrowly do not touch. So I, all of these parking spots should be able to independently spawn an airplane.
right, so now we go into options. Data, on functionalities, good traffic. Real time online. All right, let's see what happens. All right, this hasn't loaded properly. So you'll notice there's one jetway that just sort of sits there. So the parking spots haven't loaded properly. The numbers did, but the, this happens when you exit the scenery editor. But um, so the reason this is here is because I don't, this jetway doesn't actually work in real life. It's always stuck open and there's stairs connected to it. So I've just put it in kind of, you know, in there to for shows but this this spot is not serviced by a jetway all right so let's go back to the main menu real quick i'm doing real well orca i'm doing real well i'm keeping busy keeping plenty busy with the kids the family the uh scenery design stuff and flight sim work you know, it's it's busy. It's summertime, so the kids have had a lot of activities they've been doing. Went to the pool a couple times over the last couple weekends. They were all out of town for a while, so it's been good, man. I cannot complain. I can always find reason to complain. I, that's just because I shouldn't complain. I really don't have anything to complain about. Doesn't doesn't mean I don't complain. I have things to I always find something to complain about, whether it's a legit complaint or not. Or Another another story. Why do they have to be six meters apart from each other? I don't. You know, I don't know. I think the uh, I think the sim decided. I think they decided that for the sim, they wanted things six meters apart just to ensure that vehicles would have space to get in around them for the ground services. Is my understanding. Oh, look at that! I haven't seen that spawn before. King Air. I think. Pretty sure. And we got a citation. Another citation. Got a Baron. Another Kinger. A citation. It's us. Here we got the Jets. So turn that debug back on. You'll see just how bad how badly a lot of these overlap. There's always going to be a problem with this. I can't do much about it. There, are these two overlap, so only one of them will spawn an airplane. If one of them's in one of them, they won't be in the other one. These two overlap. These overlap. These don't overlap. These overlap. These don't overlap. These two overlap. These two overlap. These two overlap. Overlaps everywhere. Luckily, the United ramp doesn't have that problem. United ramp doesn't overlap with anything. So United Airlines planes, once I get those in, will actually be able to... S these four gates are all United. This is all Delta right here. This is Extra. So occasionally an airplane park there. This is where all Delta will park. I only have the default. I don't have AIG models or anything in it, so you're not going to actually see the real airplanes. This is all American. This whole side is American. Allegiant used to park there. Now they park over in this spot, I think. Yeah. So, my first foray into uh, 3D modeling is... Has start. Oh wow, this is this is fun again. No hands, guys. No hands. Let's see if I can stop this. There it goes. All right. 
back under control. This this hanger right here is my first uh, foray into 3D modeling. At some point, I'm going to try to change this beacon because this thing is all sorts of awful. The light's not even in the right spot. This model's horrendous. I can't. I don't have any control over it. It should be right there. It's not that far off, but that thing just stinks. So anyway, that's my first uh, project that I'm working on. Should I give a sneak, a little sneak preview of that? It's really nothing to speak of. It's it's not impressive, in the least. But uh, I'll show you what it's supposed to look like. It's it's like pretty much the easiest one I could find on the airport. So that's the one I went with. It has a little character to it, so I figured it wouldn't. It's similar to some of the tutorials I've been watching. I'll show you here on Google Earth what it looks like. Here it is. Sakori Aviation Standard Hangar, six door. Slightly pitched roof. Slightly. Very, very nondescript. Couple of vents there that I'll have to do. Doors I've already put in, windows. So texturing is the part that I'm worried about. I've done the doors. Texturing is going to be interesting. So you're about to see some very, very preliminary stuff here, guys. Sneak peek is coming. This is what you come here for. Open recent. There it is. Isn't it pretty? See, there's a little door. There's a little door. There's the front of it. These are all doors as well. Six doors. I'm. I'll probably. I might animate it so that it, it can open and close, but there's not really a whole lot of purpose in doing that. But uh, there's a. There's an airport. There's an airplane hangar, guys. Rainsburg, good afternoon. TBM 940 Tango Whiskey is with you. Uh, we're 15 Look at it again. Stop, stop bumping me. Uh, oh, there it is. I've uh, actually modeled in a little roof here, the track, so that when the door is open, there's something up, there's a ceiling up there. But it, you wouldn't be able to, it would just look transparent from the inside, unfortunately. Yeah, there's a little roof up there. So I'd, I'd have to do a whole interior texturing of it also if I wanted the doors to open. Otherwise, you'd never be able to see anything. So there it is. There's the basic model so far, thus far, of... There, it's slightly more detailed. I got some, some more lines here so I can draw the little vents that are here in. Then I have to define where the windows go on the, the sides. That's my door. Another door. Airplane hangar. Hooray! So I'll give it some color and then try to import it at some point. Maybe I'll try that later today. I actually get a 3D object in my a custom designed 3D project in my sim. That would be pretty cool lacking that kind of stuff so far. I'll sit right there. However, zero tango whiskey just gonna maintain three thousand. Three thousand tango whiskey thank you. So I'm all brand new at three D modeling, so I don't know anything about it. 
And I'm pretty sure it's going to go terribly. Why is this pink? Oh, it's because I got the debug on. Turn that off now. I was hoping that, uh, oh, I don't even, I don't actually have the traffic turned on. That's a problem. By default, it's all, oh, now it is. Number two Alpha, just verify you're on station. Yeah, two Alpha from station. Number two Alpha, Ryder. I was hoping that we'd get some real world traffic in here. Just I'm just not seeing it right now. Oh, wait, someone's coming. Is there an airplane out there? I think the ramp looks pretty cool. So anyway, making all this stuff work accurately with the uh, in there with AI traffic is going to be a, a process. It's going to need some testing. Because I don't exactly know the quirks and the ins and out of how all those things work. So we'll have some work to do with that. With that said, how are we doing? With, how far forward these are parking? Not too bad. Ah, simple things. A little Paw Patrol like birthday plates from his birthday party that he loves to play with. So, just looking for them. All right, so load in the scenery editor. Let's get out of debug mode. We are out of debug mode. <clears throat> All right, so the next step in this adventure. Parking paths are here. Yep. Move those to the paths folder. So I can hide those. Hide all the spots. Let's make another folder for that called parking. So I can hide those. Hide the apron as well. Now we're doing lines. Oh gosh, it's run away. Run away again. It's running away. Why is it running away on me? Why must we do this, Sim? Eh, I can't. I just can't. There we go. Okay, we're back. Gosh, this gets so funky.
clunky on me sometimes. All right, let's take this piece. I that as well. Oh, I did these already. Interesting. All right. Anyway, we're gonna start. November zero tangle with key deviations left and right are approved when able advised uh, back on course key deviations. What's that tangle with you think? I haven't figured out the whole blue line yet. Don't know where I'm gonna get that from. Anyway, let's, let's go and select the painted line. Default is fine for now. Start at point there. Approach executive six seventy with you out of eight point eight for seven thousand. We're on a heading of three two zero. Executive six seventy greens for approach altimeter is three zero two zero. I'm gonna maintain three thousand. Three thousand and three zero two zero executive six seventy. Now this is not an actual taxiway path, this is just taxiway paint that we're doing. The actual path is a separate object that uh, doesn't need to be nearly as detailed. Now this line goes straight for days. This is actually why I had it go all the way to the edge before. Now it's done. Now we do want to add some points into it. Three two five four zero greens for approach. Stay with us. Approach, keep it kind of centered. Line on the ramp. So I think what I will end up doing at some point is making each of these individual elements their own little, yeah, let's do that. Let's just start that now. It's own little folder so that I can have parking in it. that are specific to this gate. This is just sort of my method for organizing these things. And then outside of that structure, go outside of it, let's do a, let's find it yellow, wide yellow here. Oh, 
Ooh, it's not even a wide yellow. But anyway, we'll start it there. So that is a hold short taxiway line. Decathlon 411 Yankee, Greensboro Park, Sarah Park. Decathlon 411 Yankee, we are 16 miles north, inbound for a touch and go with India. Nope, that's not, that's a non movement. It's a non movement. Decathlon 411 Yankee, Spark 0122. Non movement. 0122, 411. Back. Yeah. That okay, line looks like. Jet six seventy Golden Tower. Have a good day. Not exactly sure why that's there, because this is not movement area, but whatever. Cap on four one one Yankee radar contact one two miles north of Greensboro two thousand seven hundred, and uh, you said you wanted touch and goes. Is that correct? Yes, sir. If we could just do a touch and go, then we'll be departing back to the southwest for 411 Yankee. Cap on 411 Yankee, Roger. You can expect that on runway 23 right. 23 right, 411 Yankee. Very interesting. I've never really looked at these. Spent a whole lot of time looking at this before, so I'm learning things. Anyway, go up to 108. Yankee, remind me what's the abbreviation for Decathlon? So I'm, I'm, I'm giving these, these their individual folders here because I'm changing the name of the elements inside because I'm eventually I'm going to be adding objects and stuff inside for each of these spots and I want them to all just be individual. Individualized. Radar is not showing the spot numbers yet. Right now, yeah, interesting. Let's come around the corner and be like, hey, there's a spark parking spot. Let's go park over here. Wait, now we won't park here. November 401 Yankee, join the right base for 2-3 right and contact tower. Right base for 2-3 right and I'll contact tower, thank you. And, uh, so now if I want to say like turn off spot 108, <laughs> disappears. Reappears.
You all, what you all don't know is that there's something that he's doing that is driving me nuts. <laughs> this controller. Kids, man. Kids, kids, kids. Alright. I'm gonna call it quits, I think, as soon as I get all these re configured. Getting hungry, it's lunchtime. Just maintain if you can VFR at or above 3,500. It looks like you're there at 3,700 now. I got a departure just coming off Winston up to 3. Just 3,000. Maintain uh, at or above 3,500. We're just staying beneath this layer of clouds here. Alaska 9525, 1 1,000 India. Alaska 9525, green for approach, up to 3,000. Expect a visual approach on the 2 3 left short. 3,000. Uh, demonstrated auto land, 2-3 right. Black and 9525, expect 2-3 right, and uh, yeah, that's true. Thank you. Black and 9 Tango Bravo, are you direct to the Gulf Tier Papa now? I was going to direct Vase A um, and then uh, Gulf Tier Papa, if you, but I can go direct Gulf Tier Papa if you want. The 49 Tango Bravo, oh, that's fine, I just wanted to double check. I wasn't sure where Vase A was. Oh, sorry, uh, looks like some intersection, I don't really know. It's like the end of one of these intersections. Uh, Victor Alpha, Echo Sierra Echo. Roger, yeah, I must be in Atlanta Center, JC. Tower 
Open right, sorry, take care. Alaska 9525, clear, direct Guilford, descend and maintain 6 Guilford down to 6, Alaska 9525. November 1353, we want to contact rally approach 125.3. Deviation. 
Approach uh, experimental 80 whiskey November. Be parking at signature FBI, sir. Request 2 3 left if possible. Alaska 9525, turn right, heading 090. 090, Alaska 9525. Yep. Five eyes on course. Uh, where are your public use, Foxtrot? And 26 Foxtrot, uh, are you planning to cancel once you get close to Danville, or are you looking for an approach into Danville? We'll probably just go visual and cancel. 542 Foxtrot. November 46 Foxtrot, Roger. Um, there's an A320, 3,700, sending 3,000. Our primary number is RV-7, sir. Eight zero whiskey November, Roger. RV-7, turn left, heading uh, 130. Left, 130. Uh, whiskey November. On board, 4059, contact Atlanta, 128.8. 128.8, on board, 4059, you have a good day. Thank you. Alaska 9495, traffic no factor. Say again, please, Alaska 9525. Alaska 9525, traffic no factor, turn right, heading 130. November 9 or 01 to the Fox Track Green for approach. Green cell perimeter 3019 or expect runway 23 left short. 19 on the meter and uh, 23 left short. Alaska 9525 Airport, 3 o'clock, 7 miles. Alaska 9525. Alaska 9525, clear visual approach runway 23 right. Visual 23 right, Alaska 9525. We're trying to do a, a demonstrated mm -hmm. auto land as a test flight. Can we vector to the left just a little bit? Alaska 9525, uh, clear 10 degrees left. Thanks. Number eight here, whiskey number. Turn ten degrees left. The uh, 737 or Air A320 off your uh, one o'clock is going to be turned out to the left a little bit. Hey, Permanent, we've got the A320 and uh, ten degrees left. We've got a cell in front of us. If we could come come in down when able. Number nine or zero one, Juliet Fox, right? Use. Uh, you're still out front of my airspace. Stand back for coordination. Okay, Speed inbound for two three right. Calculate turbulence behind the airbus. So you got the airport, uh, two, three right, inbound and now. November 8, zero whiskey November, affirmative, uh, constantly turbulence behind the A320, and you can make the straight in two, three right. Roger that. 9525, contact tower. All right, so I know I got the wrong line here. But just getting the line down was important, so we go over here and change the type of it. This edge line solid. Ugh. I didn't. I don't like the way that that worked at all. November two one three Mike Charlie contact Washington Center one two four point zero five. Twenty four oh five three Mike Charlie. RV eight zero whiskey November if you're still on frequency tower nineteen one. Kids are just having a blast over here. My daughter gets a little upset when the, our youngest son uh, plays with some of her toys. Four 
29, Tango Bravo, contact Atlanta Center, 125.15. And I'm with you. Cheers, <laughs> 404 Yankees, Zulu Greens for approach, altimeter 3019. Number one, number one, Juliet Fox, our deviations left are approved. One April, uh, Greg Brant, and five. Left course from Greg Brant, we're left going ahead that way, now to one Juliet Fox. All right, so we got some rather preliminary markings here on this map, on this ramp. All the yellows down, at least. I never actually finished that corner. All just a rough cut so far. Cherokee 8992 Juliet, Wiki, climbing 2800 for 3000. Cherokee 8992 Juliet, climbing 3000. Oh, well. Some point I've got to dig in and find that blue line. Direct neural. Direct neural, exit at 402. All right, good saving point. As soon as I save, I also like to publish. Make sure everything is looking good. One skip, two done, no failed. Maybe take one second. 394 milliseconds. That's what talking about. All right, good work done today, everybody. All the parking spots are in. All the painted lines are on for the, for the yellow, at least on this ramp. We have a pretty darn functional little cargo ramp here now. And the scenery is moving right along. All right, well, we're gonna, this will be our ending point for today. I uh, broke it up into two videos, and uh, we were having some connection issues earlier. But uh, thank you all for coming and, and checking us out. 
and uh, for following. I'm trying to keep trying to be a little bit more active for the next little while, and um, you'll see me do some work on my my blender uh, hanger uh, model. So I'm kind of pinging in different directions in terms of uh, getting things done, but uh, just got this ramp done. But it's, but yeah, I still have paint to put on taxiways left still that I haven't even touched yet. Gotta really do this one, get the lights and the painting elements on this part of the taxiway, and then uh, add in the rest of these ramps. The ramp area for here needs attention as well. Let's get those cement elements in there, and then I'll have all the taxiways done. And then it'll just be ramps pretty much at that point. So get this ramp done, this ramp over here, this ramp over here. So once I get all of the groundwork there done, I'm probably going to have to do the rest of this FedEx ramp as well. Then it's just after that, it's a matter of just filling in with content. And uh, I'm already kind of doing that just to, to try to get the taxiway backbone in with the with the uh, taxiway paths, taxi paths and stuff. I'll put some parking in on these ramps as well. Yeah, good work done today over on the FedEx side. Give that some attention. And we're moving right along. So it takes a while, but this stuff is not that difficult. So I'm, I, hopefully somebody is inspired by what we did today. Learned a little thing or two. And uh, feel free to jump in and get started on your own project. They're not hard to do. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Like, subscribe if you have not already, guys. Like this video, subscribe to this video. And uh, the word shall get out, and then we'll have a huge community. Build a huge community of scenery developers. Uh, shout out to Digi, Digi Driver, who um, I had a good ch good chance to talk with on Friday night. We have becoming quick friends, I think, in the community here. We're both working on uh, our own little airport projects, but uh, we're kind of relative, both relatively new, sort of similar places in our sort of journeys as uh, airport uh, designers or builders, I guess. And uh, he's, he's got a lot more experience in software stuff than I do, but... Uh, but I think uh, we're we're both sort of sharing notes on on methods and techniques and stuff, and uh, as we discovered good ways to do things that we didn't know before, we're sharing them with one another to try to come up with some best practices. And uh, you can find him over on uh, on Twitch at Digit Driver, and uh, so he's becoming a, qu a fast friend. Really appreciate him and uh, all the other friends and subscribers that we have here tonight. So uh, if you're watching now, this is the end of part two of today's stream as uh, this part one was cut short by some sort of weird behavior of my internet connection. It never went actually down, but I think it was it was chugging for a bit. And I just kind of accidentally paused the stopped the, the stream, so I had to restart it. So I appreciate everybody for coming out. Like, subscribe, ask questions, comments, anything you like down in the, the section below. And... So grateful to have all of you here. God bless you all. Have a great uh, rest of your Sunday and weekend, and we will see you next week. Take care. Zero two three four Alpha Delta with five thousand help you. Uh, I think so. Four Alpha Delta. Two three four Alpha Delta. Just gonna maintain five thousand. Five thousand. Two three four Alpha Delta. Zero five two three four one Victor Delta. Three zero one nine. Three zero four one. Four zero four Yankee Zulu contacting for approach one two six four six. Three approach.